Hello everybody, MathCar1877 here. Just got done watching a NASCAR in Sonoma, the first road course race of the year. And, yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, you know, the race didn't really have too much action going on. We didn't see any big wrecks. We really never saw uh, much passing or really a battle for the lead throughout the entire day. Uh, so, so not much was going on throughout the race, but there were still some interesting topics to talk about today. Uh, for one, NASCAR brought the carousel back for the first time since 1997 at the Sonoma uh, Raceway. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it created much better racing. There there seemed to be a little bit more passing going on through that area, but um, you know, I don't think it made much of a difference with uh, you know making the race more exciting. Uh, it definitely didn't hurt. Uh, I think they should obviously keep it there. I'm sure they will. Uh, you know, I didn't think it affected the outcome of the race too much, um, uh, but yeah. Uh, Kyle Larson also started on pole, but fell back as soon as the race started. He was already in third place by the end of lap one, uh, and then he flew, uh, flew all the way back and ended up finishing in the 10th position, so another rough day for Larson. I know 10th place isn't that bad, but for a team or for a driver that really uh, should be contending for wins and just got multiple wins in his career, uh, he's on a long winless streak. Uh, questions of whether he will return to the 42 car next year are uh, certainly in the air. And uh, we will see what happens with Larson. But if I was Larson, I think you got to start, uh, you know, getting closer to getting these wins. Uh, you know, qualifying on pole for the third year in a row at Sonoma really doesn't mean anything. So uh, just got to get up there. Got to do a little better. Got to get some better finishes. I know a lot of it has to do with luck. But, you know, as some of the commentators have said this year, you make your own luck. And uh, Kyle Larson's made some mistakes this year, and I just think if you want to keep that ride for sure, I don't think he'll get kicked out, especially not this year, but if you want to keep that ride for sure, uh, the best way to do that is start getting some wins. And with that being said, that's about all that happened. We had uh, William Byron get his first stage win of the year in stage one, uh, then that was the last heat we saw him leading in the race. Um, we had Denny Hamlin get his ninth stage win, just really not too much going on a lot of strategy was used at the end of the stages i don't understand i don't know why william byron and really any team up front did not decide to go down pit road right before the end of stage one uh, like kyle bush did martin trex jr did you know the top finishers did uh, that really hurt william byron he wasn't even up front at all uh, after that incident uh, just a surprise call for me by Ch uh, by Chad Canals. I mean, one of the greatest crew chiefs. It's just that's that's a mistake. You gotta you gotta avoid those mistakes. Same thing. Denny Hamlin did the same thing, and yes, he rebounded to finish fifth. But as Denny Hamlin said in his interview, he thinks he had a fast enough race car to get to the 19 car of Martin Truex Jr. The winner, by the way, uh, he thought he had a fast enough car to get there, but he well, he didn't have enough track position because of his pit road strategy. So that's just something that you can't do as a crew chief as a team. Uh, you got to know the outcome of the race before you go into the race and knowing when those stage breaks are. Uh, it definitely messed up William Byron, which I believe finished 19th, which is horrible uh, for that team or, you know, really just bad in general uh, when you, you know, lead the first stage and win the first stage. Uh, to finish 19th is obviously not good. And uh, like I said for Hamlin, he could have possibly uh, continued for the win, according to his interview, uh, but he just didn't have enough track position. Uh, so now I'm just going to kind of take you through the, the top ten. We had Martrex Jr. get his fourth win of the year, which ties Kyle Busch in uh, most wins in 2019. Kyle Busch finished second. There was a bit of an interesting battle there at the end. I don't know why Kyle Busch waited a few laps uh, after Truex made his last pit stop. It was about five laps later until Kyle Busch made his last pit stop. Uh, I don't really know if that would have affected the outcome of the race, but I was a little bit surprised to see that. Uh, but like I said, I don't really, I don't know if that really affected the outcome of the race. Truex was extremely fast all day long. He seemed to have the better race car. I'm sure Truex was, you know, not pushing it as hard as Kyle Busch was uh, through that whole run, even before the pit stops. Uh, so it looked like Truex would have got the win, but that was just still, once again, that was surprising to me that Busch uh, decided to stay out, you know, an extra five laps, which uh, it definitely didn't help him. Uh, so I was surprised to see that. Uh, Ryan Blaney ends up finishing in third, the highest uh, Ford Mustang uh, finisher of the race. Matt Benedetto having a great run with his team. He ended up finishing fourth, which I believe his best career finish ever, uh, and that should be his first top five. I believe his best finish before that was Bristol 2016 when he finished in sixth. 
uh, but he got a fourth place finish, and that was fun watching him come up through the field. He went past Jimmy Johnson, he went past Denny Hamlin, so that was fun to watch him. Uh, got a fourth place finish, a great run by that 95 team. Uh, in fifth position, like I said, Denny Hamlin, who just kind of screwed himself on the track on the strategy moves that took him out of the race for the win. Uh, he got a top five finish. Uh, Kevin Harvick finishing sixth, which is still winless in 2018, uh, 2019. I believe it was one year ago. He had five wins at this time. Uh, so yeah, uh, Harvick's definitely not performing like he did at all uh, just one season ago. Uh, Ryan Newman, uh, he finished. Uh, had another good run. He finished in the seventh position. Eric Jones finishing eighth. Another one of those Joe Gibbs Toyotas. So uh, all Joe Gibbs Toyotas finishing the top ten. Uh, the lowest uh, finishing one was actually in eighth, Eric Jones. And then uh, uh, Joe Gibbs' affiliated team, the number 95, Matt Benedetto, also finished in the top 10. And then Almirola finished in 10th. And then, once again, I'll talk about Larson. He fin- uh, I'm sorry, Almirola finished in 9th. And then Larson uh, finished in the 10th position, uh, your pole sitter. But something else that was interesting to me, this was the race that, on- that had no cautions. That's the second time this year we've had a race with no cautions. Uh, back in Las Vegas earlier. I believe in uh, March and then uh, today in uh, um, California, we had no cautions as well except for the stage breaks. Uh, and I believe it was one year ago in Sonoma, we only had one caution flag, which Martin Truex Jr. also won. Uh, you know, I like to talk about stats a little bit. So, uh, uh, like I said, Martin Truex Jr. gets his third win uh, at Sonoma. Well, that's really all there is to say about the race. But uh, like I said, this is Fox Sport, or the first road course race of the year, but Fox Sports' uh, last uh, race of the year that they will be covering is NBC Sports. Uh, will take over next week in Chicago, which means that today marked Daryl Waltrip's last NASCAR race that he would commentate for. Daryl Waltrip's been in the sport since 1972 when he hopped in a uh, 95 car at Talladega Super Speedway. He went on to win 84 NASCAR wins and and three championships in his 29-year NASCAR driving career. Uh, And then he took over the broadcast in 2001 and talked on television for 19 years for Fox NASCAR. Uh, And even Fox put up uh, some interesting stats for his broadcasting career. He had 200 and 80 uh, NASCAR Cup races that he commentated for at 18 different racetracks. And 88,000, more than 88,000 laps, which is more than 114,000 miles. So that's it. Daryl Waltrip, I would like to thank you for everything you did. We got our last boogity, boogity, boogity today uh, is when we took the green flag at Sonoma. But, yep, that's it. Daryl Waltrip, you've, you've been you know, a tremendous help for NASCAR. You've done so much for the sport uh, over, I believe, 40, 50 something years now. So you've been in it for quite some time. Uh, but today marked your last day uh, in NASCAR. Uh, but you will forever be a legend in NASCAR. And uh, thank you, Daryl Waltrip. That's all I have to say. It was a pretty mediocre race in Sonoma. Uh, but that's it. If you're not first, you're last. And let's get rowdy.